With Virgin Media, you can build up the entertainment and tear down the price. Switch to Virgin Media today and get super fast broadband and TV for just 49 euro a month for an awesome 12 months. The sale that stacks up. Now on. See virginmedia.ie and check out how our mobile sales stacks up too. T's and C's apply. See virginmedia.ie. 12 month contract. Offer ends 27th of February 2019. Hi guys, well from beautiful Salt Lake City, Utah It's Thank God I'm Atheist The podcast I'm Frank Feldman I'm Dan Beecher And coming up today Mormons, here's the thing Uh, We talk about Mormonism a lot It's where we came from Uh, Y'all are fascinated, we know you are We're fascinated And we were in the whole whole thing You're listening to us Uh, But uh, Frank used a term earlier uh, that I glommed onto, which is he called Mormonism an ancestry cult. Yeah. And boom! <laughs> we had a subject. Yeah. Because let me tell you something. Uh, they do like their ancestors. It's, yeah. I mean, you might as well be in an, in Mulan at this point. You Borderline might, this, worship. It is. It is it, There's definitely a fetish, fetishizing. Yeah. Of the whole thing. They like to talk about their, you know, the fact that they're Christians and they, you know, they want to point out all the crossover between them sure. and mainstream Christianity. But you know what? Whatever. This is, a, this is this is like Buddhism crossover here. This is like yeah. some Zen stuff this, with, the, this, with the ancestry worship. This is where they get, uh, they dip it into some uh, strange territory. Yeah. For, so we're, uh, we're going to talk about all that towards, towards the end of the program. Yeah. Uh, so you have that to look forward to. Indeed. And speaking of Christians. Oh, I do speak of Christians all uh, the time. Apparently, yeah. according to a new poll that came out not so long ago. You love a uh, That poll. was conducted by the Washington Post and the Kaiser Family Foundation. Sure. Uh, in which they asked six, uh, 1,686 American adults a simple question. And I want to know where you land on this question, okay. Dan. Um. Are you more likely, when thinking about poverty and the roots of poverty, mm. do you think that the cause of po- that that one person's poverty is due to their lack of work, their lack of effort, or are you more likely to blame basically the, the, the circumstances? Uh, I think it is a lack of moral character. <laughs> That's not... There is no C, Dan. <laughs> This is A or B. Uh, I I am definitely a a, uh, a person who who believes that people probably don't choose poverty most of the time, right? And and circumstances have left them have have put them put most people in a, who are poverty stricken. So circumstances outside their control. Of Indeed. Sorts. Yeah. yeah. Indeed. Yeah. yeah. And those circumstances may be personal circumstances, yeah. like they're like you know like a, a, a personal disability or something like that. Sure. Yeah. But yeah, I would say I would say most people uh, that that if, if you have the capacity to uh-huh. make yourself uh, to bring yourself out of poverty, right? You you would. And uh, this uh, this answer to to that question, uh-huh. and your answer to that question, yes, is uh, not surprising, right? Because this poll found that Christians are twice as likely as basically non Christians uh, to blame a person's poverty on lack of effort, right? Um, and this has actual like, um, theological, um, basis basis. Yeah. Um, like if you look at, um, basically even just like the story of the garden, garden of Eden. Sure. Right. Uh, there was no poverty in the garden of Eden. We we live in, (laughs) no, we, we, and, and so we live in a fallen world. Mm. Right. Um, and so there is poverty. Right, and so the, the and so this this article is talking about how, um, the, yeah, sort of the unwillingness to work, bad financial decisions, blah 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 blah. That's right. all to be blamed upon the person. Right. Yeah. Because because Christianity's because, personal responsibility. Because that person was sitting in their home deciding between uh, 
choice A and choice B. And they're like, well, choice A will lead me out of poverty. <laughs> but choice B will keep me in it. Hmm. I feel like B. <laughs> Is that weird? I feel like it's more fun mm-hmm. if I stay in misery. Oh, yeah, absolutely. That feels right. Do you know what I was thinking about doing this afternoon? <laughs> I was thinking about being poor. You know what would be fun? I think I want to be poor. You know, all those poor, all those sad sacks who have their power on all the time, who are like, who never wonder where their next meal is coming from, what are they doing with themselves? <laughs> Jesus Christ, I know. Morons. Ugh. I'm going to choose poverty. Poverty. It's, it's great. It's great. <laughs> no, um, and then, of course, they found other things. Uh, Democrats, of course... Um, seventy-two percent blame circumstances uh, versus Republicans, which are uh, at only thirty-two percent, which are willing to blame circumstances. Right, uh, with sixty-three percent blaming lack of effort. Um, they found, of course, uh, atheists. That's are, us. That's us. Um, atheist, agnostic, or no particular affiliation. Uh, say more than two to one. Uh, that it's uh, uh, the circumstances to blame. Yeah. Not lack of effort. Now, this is really... It's it's weird how these these perceptions of world... Of, of the world that we live in are so colored by these other, like, yeah. mindsets, right? Like, why is the fact that I no longer believe the whole Christianity thing did I fall into this other camp? Well, the I mean, the religious... Because I grew up with that kind of mentality. Right. You know? It, the religious line is really interesting to me because at once they believe in Jesus and Jesus said things like, give everything you have to the poor people. Jesus said that. Right. Which would lead one to believe that it's not... Like, the, the poor people aren't choosing this. Your charity uh, is good. But then there's this whole hard line that so many uh, conservative Christians take, right? Uh, which is about like pulling your pull up your pull yourself up by them bootstraps. That's what God give them to you for, and you know make sure that and you know I don't want my money going to support that welfare queen. Blah blah blah. Right. And it's just like what about uh what about that compassion that that Jesus was talking about? You remember that Jesus guy? Right. You, that's your guy. You guys are supposed to like that guy, not me. Well, first of all, I object to being called a queen. <laughs> so <laughs> you're not on that's welfare. That's a problem. You're, you're, you don't even qualify for that. <laughs> but uh, no, it's uh, the verse in Thessalonians, I guess there's a verse in Thessalonians that says, oh. quote, the one who is unwilling to work shall not eat. And so this is where Christians are able oh. to like really like they can ignore Jesus on all this stuff. Right. Because they've, they've got Paul. other stuff. Yeah. Or, who, is it Paul that wrote to the Thessalonians? I don't yeah, know. I'm sure that's who who would know. That's a Pauline epistle, right? There's no there's really no way of knowing. There's that. no way of knowing. And so <laughs> you can't you can't know these things. <laughs> and so you have to act on faith. Um you know, ignore what Jesus had to say. Yeah. That's that's usually the Christian way. Yeah. Ignore all the the the, the Christ teachings. Yeah, the, thing. the red letters Listen in to the Bible. His followers right. and how they, what they had to say, because they were more rules based, and rules are easier. Okay. Like like just just pronouncements. Those right. are tricky. I am the fullness of whatever. Right. The law, whatever he said. No. No. So what does that mean, Jesus? Good. God, man. Jesus, that would mean that the Ten Commandments don't apply anymore. Love thy neighbor as thyself? Yuck. What the fuck is wrong with you? Have you met my neighbor? <laughs> She's a bitch. I'm not going to love her. She is a sweet old woman, Dan. <laughs> That's you, not nice. You don't even know. You what if she heard this, Dan? You, you don't know her. What if she's an avid listener, Dan? It's, then she wouldn't be so much of a cunt to me. <laughs> wow. Okay. <laughs> Things things just got a little heated. <laughs> I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna step that one back a little bit. Uh, let's just she's move a on. dear 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 woman. She's not. She's a horrible person, but that's okay. She's she's nice to your face. Um, 
<laughs> I'm going to move on. Let's move on. Sure. I, I'm going to move on to uh, to the Vatican, <laughs> where Pope Franny, who is also nice to your face, and then a bitch behind your back. Shush. Really? Yeah. Based on what? I don't buy it. Uh, well, so like, how just dare a, you? You'll recall it just a little while ago. Uh, he had some. He he actually said something about how the church should apologize to gay people. Uh, because the church had been so mean to gay people, so that seemed like a that seemed yeah. like a promising thing. Yeah. Uh, well, n- most recent uh, thing is uh, he has basically said that uh, th- he says today in schools they are teaching this to children to children that everyone can choose their gender, and it's terrible. He says the w- he said it is terrible. This whole trans thing. It's the worst thing in the world. Right, he said he was... Wait a sec, wait a sec. There's just a semantic thing here, or yeah. a wording, phrasing thing here. Choosing gender? Well... I th- I thought that people feel that, like, the that gender. they've always been a specific gender. Or well, perhaps oh... They're, they're, they're not choosing, like, even, like, somebody who might be gender fluid and kind of wait. moves from one to the other. Wait. They're not choosing in that moment. They're, Are you accusing... The Pope of not being super duper up to date on what we believe, what what is now known about. R- I just gender. think he's being a little disingenuous. That's all. <laughs> I think he's being the Pope. He said he was. He, here's the thing. He said he was talking to his predecessor, Pope Benedict. Oh, which is not something a Pope should be able to do. I bet some have thought they were. Yeah, that may be the case. Anyway, he said. Quote, speaking with Pope Benedict, who is who is well and has a clear mind, he was telling me, holiness, this is the epic of sin against God, the creator. He's intelligent. God created man and woman. God created the world this way, this way, this way. And we are doing the opposite. Hmm. Wow. So two cisgendered men have decided for the rest of us that uh, that gender is, is innate and bestowed upon us by God. Right. And if you got a pee-pee, you're a boy. Well, the- And if you got a hoo-hoo, you're a girl, and that's how Jesus wants it. End of story. That's the end of it. Full stop. There are no other questions that come into this uh, conversation. So shut up. Done. It's the end. God uh, is intelligent, and if God, and 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 if God created people who have a genetic code that looks a little different than mine, that's not true. God's in, too intelligent for that. Mm. There's no intersex people. No. Oh. There's no trans people. Dear God, no. There's none of that stuff. This whole thing only works if there's a binary. <laughs> it, it, there uh, must be a binary. That's right. And you stay on your side. Well, think about it. Ones are ones. Zeros God, are zeros. God created. The heavens and the earth, the light and the dark, it's all its all just one thing in opposition to another thing. Right. Always. Always. Yin and yang, Dan. And believe me, I am in opposition to women. They're the worst. I, th- I love the fact that these two men go around calling each other, your holiness. Oh, your holiness. Oh, yeah. Hello. Good afternoon, your holiness. Yeah, oh, exactly. your holiness. I didn't see you there. Oh, yeah. <laughs> That's just. Yeah, I want to see a meeting between the like those two just sort of bump into each other in the hallway. I want to just see what that looks like. <laughs> holiness, holiness. Yeah, your 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 mm. royal holiness. Your hey, holiness. I got something to say about these trans people. <laughs> Benny, Frankie. Yeah, right. All right. Um, you've heard about the drive-through church, right? Oh, there's all kinds of things. But yeah. yes, it was. Yeah. yeah, I remember there being a. Yeah. Like you just get a prayer. Sure. Just yeah. pull up for a quick prayer. Yeah. Well, not to be outdone by the Christians. Oh, These no. Christians are innovators in, <laughs> if, these, in this sort of. If there's one thing we can realm, give them. Right. They are just. They're always coming up with new ways of reaching the masses. Mm. Uh, well, there's something new in Cairo. What? In the metro. In one of the metro stations, a booth has popped up <laughs> with clerics. Uh, from a certain, yeah, uh, institute, the Al-Azhar Institute, um, which is the Sunni Muslim world's uh, foremost religious institution. Okay. Okay. 
uh, they are staffing this booth to be able to answer uh, questions and to be able to issue fatwas. Oh, good. You know, let me tell you something. For the for the busy Cairo commuter <laughs> who doesn't have time to necessarily go to a mosque and go through all the rigmarole of getting your normal fatwa. <laughs> what you need to do, you need fatwa on the go. Yes. You get off your train, you pop in real quick. Hey, yeah. hey, Imam, I got I got zero time. I need a couple quick fatwas. What do you got for me? Right. And they'll just they'll just hand a couple out. Boom, boom, boom. Yeah. Uh, and you're on your way. Maybe get your shoe shined while it's happening. Yeah. You just it's it's a one stop shop. Absolutely. <laughs> uh, maybe we should clarify what the word uh, fatwa means. Sure. Why don't because you do that? You, you just ran with it. Yeah. Sure. We all know what it means. It means the fatwa. It means uh, killing Christians. I'm pretty sure that's what it means. Apparently, it means advice. Yeah, I know. Yeah, okay. Yeah. So, uh, but it, it has a scary uh, Arabic sound to it. Yeah, and so well, it, and it's dear linked. God. It's linked with the word jihad, which also doesn't mean what we think yeah. it means. Yeah, that's true. Would you like a side of jihad with your fatwa? I, ooh. Would you do like it, to biggie size your fatwa? I dip my. I like to dip my fatwa in my jihad. Is that is that gauche? <laughs> Would you like to jihad size your fatwa? <laughs> you know what? I I haven't eaten anything all day. Yeah, super size that. I need. <laughs> I need it. I'd like that Allah size. Uh, could, you, could you Allah size that? Muhammad Al- size. Uh, Akbar something or other. Yeah, that's right. I'd like a. Would you like a side of Akbar of Allahu Akbar? <laughs> Well, nonetheless, uh, not everybody's happy about it, of course. Oh. Uh, <laughs> uh, amongst get, get which, with the, of course. Get with the times, people. Your Copts aren't happy. The Coptic Christians? Yeah. The, they uh, can't be happy with just about anything in Egypt. Oh, God. I, 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 is, I just feel for these you people. You know, I, all of the American Christians can shut the fuck up. Yeah. But the Copts, they're really getting shit all oh, over. Yeah. So I, I'm okay with that. Like, if anytime a Coptic Christian is like, persecution, is like, I'm being persecuted. I'm, yes, you are, sir. Why, indeed. <laughs> you have uh, you have rightly said. And well, then the second someone in Egypt goes, I'm being persecuted, some fucking dill hole in America goes, see, Christians are being persecuted all over the world. And it's right. like, no, there. Right. Only there. That place where they're surrounded yeah, maybe By, Indonesia uh, or something, but not not you. Right, you have to shut up now. Yeah, uh, yeah. Uh, so there's a quote from uh, a, a 24 year old Coptic Christian by the name of Bashoy Mikhail. Uh, this is not the place at all. I am completely against the idea. <laughs> um, then and then of course you know Al Azhar. Uh, apparently there. I mean. It's a really powerful institution. Yeah. And they've got like all the, you know, legitimacy of. And they're know, in being... a country that is 100% behind them. Right. Exactly. Uh, so, you know, they're, they, they don't really see the problem. They're planning more of these. Mm. They're planning uh, more metro stations and pretty much just anywhere. Sure. They, they want to see these pop up all over the place. Of and it's sort of the example, like, because I guess, you know, like sometimes you need some advice. Right. Right. And that's that's what this is. They I guess they don't have Dear Abby <laughs> right. in, in Egypt. Sure. Uh, so you you have you, to go find a, you meet, an imam. You, you know, you're on the train. You meet a cop on the train. And you're like, do I kill him? I don't even know if I kill him or not. <laughs> or is it more of a stony? And it, is this, I mean, do I get everybody I, on the train involved in this? Or do I just leave them? I, like, I don't even know what to do. You know what? Next stop, I'm getting off. I'm going to go get some some fatwa. Yeah, I'm going to fatwa it up. <laughs> At which point they'll they'll the imam there will very calmly tell and very wisely tell you, no, you needed to beat up that Christian. If you see him again, yeah, poke him in the eye. Yeah, like we do. You are Musliming wrong. You, yeah, do it better. <laughs> now go say three hail Muhammad's and one our Allah. <laughs> I'm pretty sure they don't do that. I, I think they Mary, will. Uh, <laughs> Hail Mary, right? Isn't that is it? Hail Mary. Yeah, yeah. They they believe in Mary. Well, they believe in Miriam, Jesus, you know, yeah. and Jesus too. Yeah. 
anyway. and there's really not that much different no between a, uh good thing between too. them and and us they're just like us it's a good thing that there's not much difference because then there would be fighting if there was a if there was much difference between Islam oh, no. and the Christians, well, we'd they'd, they'd probably they'd probably be fighting. The two worlds would never get along. But since they're so close together, they don't ever do that. Yeah, no, it's, it's it's really lucky. It's good. It's fortuitous. It is good. I'm going to take us to the far off land of here in Utah. Oh. I don't know if you've been to here, huh. but here you are. Yeah, uh, where a new uh, legislative position has been filled. Uh, oh good. Uh there will be a new a new person who's in charge of basically uh writing laws. Uh That's wonderful. Part uh the uh It's good news. We've had bad laws in the past. We have bad bad laws. Um the legislator's office that that drafts the laws. So uh-huh. make sure that the writing, you know, does the writing of the laws and all that sure. stuff. Sure. So so it's like a legislator has an idea, hey, I want to target this group of people. Right. I want uh, I want to make somebody's how, life miserable. How do I do that? I want people are still drinking alcohol. Uh we need to draft a new law <laughs> to make it more annoying. Not to ban it, just no. to make it that much more so They don't want to lose the revenue stream. <laughs> Well, just I need to poke him in the ribs a little bit. Yeah. Uh, well, the, so the new the new head of that has been hired, a man named uh, John Q. Cannon. Um, okay. Uh, what What does that name say to you? Well, here's the thing: many of our listeners, that name will just be a name. But I'm guessing that it just conjures something for you. Well, there's uh, what was it? George Q. Cannon, right? Wasn't it George? Who was a, a, a who was one of the a, early, a Mormon, a Mormon apostle, apostle or something? Yeah. yeah. Well, and there's uh, just south of here, Dan. Um, how many blocks south? Like twenty blocks south of here, is the uh, Cannon Estate. Oh. Yeah, on uh, California Avenue. Oh, it's oh, right there. Sure, sure. You know. Well, uh, so the name Cannon, probably, especially with the middle initial just thrown in the there, Q is it the makes real it feel one. super duper Mormon, right? It's a very prominent Mormon name. Yeah, uh, he, this man not only is he LDS, which I mean that's no big deal. Almost everybody on the hill is LDS because sure. there's so many LDS people here in the state. He was also one of the two. Uh, lobbyists that the church hired to send into uh to the legislature oh. on a regular basis so oh. he is oh, well, so, oh so he's familiar <clears throat> with the process oh yes <laughs> yes yes he is uh he well that could that could serve him well he's a yeah the office of really legislative job, research and and general counsel um basically here's the deal the the LDS church and you know one LDS or one former Utah le- le- legislator, or uh, I don't know who it was. Yeah, this is but this is recent. Just this is he just came out with this statement uh, based on this appointment of of Cannon to but, to this uh, thing. Yeah, he basically said because Cannon had made a statement about like you'd be surprised at how little. The LDS Church, uh, how little lobbying the LDS Church actually does. Right. Which you might be surprised by, considering how much power they wield. Right. But here's the thing. It's not that the, that the, legis- or the, the lobbyists are, do- are, are wielding much power. It's that one whisper happens to one legislator or three legislators who are top dudes, and they just disseminate the orders of the church to the other uh LDS lawmakers, lawmakers who are LDS, yeah. regardless of party affiliation. Jesus Christ! And it just happens, right? No, and no, these lobbyists don't go through channels. They don't. They don't. You know, they don't sit down and um and and give testimony at hearings uh, right. about laws or whatever. They don't need to, right? So anyway, this guy who was one of those guys uh, is now. Is now in charge of uh, of of a pretty high up position. Now that's not a bad thing. It was probably always going to be a Mormon anyway. It right. was. I mean, and and he's not making the laws. He's just drafting the laws. Sure. Uh, but the, I mean, it just to me, it feels like this. Does, it's a more efficient way of running the whole thing for the you know, <laughs> right for, for the church because like they've cut out the middleman. Right. It's so the annoying. Middleman. 
Like, it's so annoying to have to have all of those phone calls yeah. to find out what the church wants you to do before you do it. Yeah. Call, now, the, call the guy who writes the laws just, and just, just tell him what you want. He'll probably just send you some stuff without you even asking for probably. it. Probably. He'll probably he'll, he'll just yeah. show up on your desk. Oh, oh, I'm sponsoring this? Cool. And then, and then oh, it's... Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. A little post-it that says, you know, from the first presidency. Yeah, Exactly. Oh, my God. Well, yeah. He'll, he'll probably, probably just walk down the street to the church office building every day. Eh. Just be like, from, from the state capitol building, which is, what, a three-block walk? Roughly that. Yeah. And just uh, and just say, hey, uh, anything for me today? <laughs> okay. Bye. Uh, that's so gross. No, uh, yeah. Uh, Urquhart, I think, was, or something like that. Mm. He was a, a senator, state senator. Mm. He's the one you're thinking of that kind of was like, um, yeah, I watched this process plenty of times. Mm-hmm. And like they, uh, um, I think he was calling back to some of the anti, uh, LGBT stuff that they did. Right. Right. Well, he also mentioned, uh, yeah, no, he did. He mentioned some, 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 L- so he was doing, he made, so he did some pro LGBT legislation, uh-huh. which was squashed. Right. And then later magically reappeared. But from the church. Only because the church gave their say so. Right. Gave their okay. Right. And it was just the housing protection stuff. Right. Yeah. The church needed some, some positive publicity from some non yeah. uh, Mormons. And so that's, that's what they did. Yeah. Was it Steve Urquhart? Was that the something like that? Some, some something along those lines. I read this that article earlier this week. Yeah, I don't, re- I don't really know. Uh, all right, um, Dan. Yes. There, uh, there was a, a a search for a missing person in, in uh, California this last week. Mm. Um, a uh, a kindergarten teacher from Modesto. California had gone missing. Oh dear! Uh, and uh, so, big manhunt, you know, woman hunt, woman hunt, search, yeah, missing person search. All sure. the all the words when you know went spread across the land that they're looking for. Um, well, they found her. She's safe uh, now. Um, she suffers from bipolar disorder. Oh dear! And apparently. Uh, had been, you know, very stable for, for some time. Okay. And, but she stopped taking her medicine. Oh. Which is not always a wise thing to do. That sounds like a very bad idea. Uh, but it wasn't really her idea. Oh, okay. She got some fatwa, apparently, from (laughs) a, uh, or advice, if you weren't listening to it's the last segment, two segments ago. Um, the uh, her pastor, and, or a pastor, and his wife told her that pills lead to demons, oh. and so that she should probably stop taking them. So she was <laughs> off her meds for about six months. Oh Jesus! And uh, they ended up finding her out in like a cattle field. Um, really, just really just sad. Really sad. She thought she was a cow. Yeah. That's really sad. She was trying to get to Yosemite, but was like, kind of went the wrong direction, I guess. Yeah. Um, and uh, is being treated in Fresno and will be. Good Lord. Returned to Modesto at some point. But um, if not already. Uh, but yeah, this whole pills, Dan, they're, they're going to get you demons. You, well. You can put demons in you. Clearly, that was great advice because things worked out so well for her. Yeah, it seems like uh, the lack of pills released her demons yeah, more than anything. Yeah, it seems like if pills were keeping the demons at bay. Yeah, if there if there is a relationship between her pills and her demons, uh, they went the other direction. <laughs> yeah, it was just, not. It's just so sad. Oh my god! Like, uh, ladies and gentlemen, uh, just as we would, uh, you know, admonish you never to take medical advice from us. Certainly don't take medical advice from a pastor. Oh, dear God, no. Um, Unless they're a doctor, I suppose. But probably... I'd still steer clear. Yeah, just just go find yourself a doctor. Yeah. Yeah, pastors... Anyway, no matter how you look at it, a pastor's the wrong person to get your medical advice from. Yeah. Uh, Go Instead of a pastor, go to someone who knows what they're talking about, like the Scientologists. 
Oh yeah, they're they're one hundred percent on 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 point when it well, comes to your medicines. Uh, Scientology. Yeah, so, science. Cyan. It's got science. Cyan. Science. Cyan. Cyan. Right in it. Yeah. Scientist. Yeah. You just take out the allo, and then you've got scientist. Yeah. Scientology. <clears throat> they study science. Yeah. Doy. Obviously. <laughs> uh, I'm gonna move on. Some uh, good news? Question mark. In the world, uh, uh, sure, goodish news, but better than bad news. Um, the first Anglican gay marriage in Britain has occurred. Really, isn't that delightful? This seems like. Are you sure that's a headline from right now? Yeah, you well, thought you, you thought that happened a long time ago. I would have assumed if you'd asked me. <clears throat> no, 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 no. The Church of England uh, only just recently, the Church of England in Great Britain has only just been okay. The most it. English of all. Of all the, right. CMEs. This did not happen in England. This happened in Scotland, I will say. The, the most British of all the right. CFEs. Yeah, indeed. Uh, and also, by the way, nobody involved in this ritual seems to have been uh british uh well maybe i don't know the reverend was marcus dunskolfer um which is a traditional scottish name i'm pretty sure well the scots are british well yeah but i'm saying that that's a german name oh okay 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 you Sorry. with me dunskolfer with well, a, but you told you me that it was a out? traditional scottish name and yeah. who, who who am i to <laughs> to argue to argue okay that no. sounded very <laughs> scottish to me Dunskofer uh, is a is not a Scottish name that I'm aware of. Okay, I, okay. Um, well, don't and, tell me that it is, and Dan, apparent... and pull the rug out from under me. <laughs> Sorry, I thought you were listening. Um, <laughs> only as, only the minimal required only, amount. Only a cursory, just... like just so barely <laughs> anything could glance off of you at this point. Uh and apparently the two people who, who, who married each other were an American couple with, with some Scottish roots, some Scottish connections, uh, who had been together for 24 years. Anyway, uh, they had a nice, small, religious affair. Okay. They were, they were not up for... This was not the gay weddings that you hear so much about with fanciness and, yeah. I don't know, drag. I don't know what... I've never... I've been to a couple gay weddings. None of them have ever been... No. These amazing, huge, fancy things. Not at all. No, they're just they're just weddings. Lovely, intimate affairs. Uh, well, the, one of them tastefully adorned. I, I did go to one that was so not intimate because I mean it was it was the uh, the kitchen. It was Derek uh -oh. Kitchen and, and Moody, yeah. and they got married in a, a giant center. Giant, I did Gallivan Center. Oh, okay. And it was huge. I guess they're not always tasteful affairs. No. I'm thinking of a lesbian wedding I went to a number of years ago. <laughs> anyway. Uh, so, yeah, the, uh, the, in June, the Scottish Episcopal Church, which is part of the Anglican Communion, announced that it was allowing gay marriages. So, like, this is still, I mean, we're not even, I don't even think we've made it to England yet. Have we? I'm not sure. Here's the thing. <laughs> the, 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 uh, the Anglican Communion... The uh -huh. large overarching thing is in trouble because there is a rift. A schism? A, sh a schism. It's not quite a... It, they haven't schized yet. Okay. They're just rifting currently. Rift. Okay. Uh, over the homosexuality thing. And it looks like it's only going to get worse. Uh, so you know, you, you got all of Africa. Right. Four square against it. Right. So the rift is trending towards schism. Maybe, Currently. maybe. I mean, uh, these, these, these. Uh, but how, when you skies away from the the, the C of E, when yeah, uh, it should just be the C of A. What are you, the C of? They no. should just they should just turn into the 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 Church of Africa. Forget forget England. Why why are they hanging on to this? I don't know. The C of E was. Invented because they wanted to, like, create something new in opposition to the Pope. So the spirit of the whole thing yeah. should just be skies away. You have, you have a tradition already in place. Just do it. Right. Just break off. All right. But, uh, but they, the, C of e, the, the Archbishop of Canterbury doesn't want that. He's trying desperately to hold on to everybody. 
Let it go, man. I don't think that's going to happen, dude. Just, just uh, quit pushing your gay agenda. Just embrace the gays, and, and maybe all the homophobes will stick around. You right? Know? Or I mean, r- come on. <clears throat> yeah, it's not hard. Just come out with a statement that is unequivocally, gays are fine. Stop being a dick, and see what happens. What would? What, boy, wouldn't that be revolutionary? Line in the sand. Yeah. Just, just do it. Anyway, this far and no further. <laughs> Uh, or something. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, if you have anything you'd like to write in to say to us uh, about any of these things or anything else, please feel free to do so. You can write to us podcast at thankgodimatheist.com or call and leave us a voicemail message. Mm. The telephone number is 424 666 8442. Yeah. Hey, go to the Facebook page. Go to facebook.com slash TGI Atheist and click the like button there. And while you're there, Search for the TGIA Members Only Lounge and request to join. It's a closed group, but we'll let you in. Because we're nice like that. So, Dan. Yes, sir. Um, you're familiar with the president of these United States, correct? I'm, I try not to be. <laughs> I uh, I try to have amnesia on a daily basis to, to block out the information yeah. about who's president currently. Well, the evangelicals are in the most strange love affair with the him. Yeah. At the moment. They're, they're taking it to new extremes. And this is actually a clip from a few months ago that we missed. Oh. Um, but um, I thought it was worthy of our attention today. Okay. So this is the Jim Baker show. Gotta and love he's got Jay Bake. He's got, <laughs> he's got, uh, of course, a batshit crazy guest. He does has- that. He loves to have uh, somebody come on who's just gonna say something completely off the the grid. Yeah, and so this guy has something to say about Trump. This is our time of the church. This is the great outpouring. I believe it with all of my heart. This book, Final Fire, we're there, folks. We are in the final days. I believe you're going to hear more talk about the the, the great uh, uh, temple being built in Israel. Do you ever, do you believe that at all? I'm, I didn't ask you well, ahead of time, so maybe. Well, yeah, I mean, certainly, and there's a push for that. And did you notice that one of the very first things when Trump was elected, the, uh, the rabbis in Israel calling on him and Putin to use their international clout to do what? To rebuild the temple. Don't think this can't happen. I think impetus is on our side right now. I think we're moving towards a moment. And the rabbis over there, some of what the mystical rabbis are saying is very, very curious right now. Mm. What are, can, I, wow. can, we, can we find out right well, now? Will we just go? Yeah, yeah, yeah go. I want to know. They, well, I know my audience. They, yeah. <laughs> so look, I, and there's so many of these articles. We've been running them at Skywatch TV almost every week right now. Uh, and so I only brought a couple of them with me. This one, Trump upset victory divinely sent to begin messianic pro- uh, process, say Israeli rabbis, mm-hmm. right? Uh, and this one, ancient secret of Daniel 70 weeks predicts end of days will come this year in 5777, which started in October last month in the Jewish calendar year and will be done by September of the coming year. So. Uh, and that, and by the way, that was Rabbi uh, uh, Mir Horowitz 300 years ago, working on Daniel's uh, time, time, and half a time. And he wow. set a date. He set a date 300 years ago. He said, this will all happen. The Messiah will arrive. The end times will begin in the Jewish calendar year 5777. The rabbis have held that dear to them since then. What what is that? That's 2016 to 2017. Messiah will arrive. Now they're looking at Donald Trump. One of the rabbis illustrated how his name in the gematria, the numerology of his name actually means Messiah. Uh Now there's some weird stuff here that's going on. So big, so (laughs) Donald Trump, a as, as Messiah. Now someone at some point, you'd think that they'd point out to this guy that he's not Jewish because 
Does the uh, Messiah have to be Jewish? Well, no. I'm saying point out to the guy who was talking, whoever this nutball is. Right. I don't know his name. All he's doing is quoting all of these rabbis and all of their predictions and stuff. You know you're Christian, right? I know. That's weird. You know that that's not what you believe in. You believe in Christian people. Right. But when <laughs> when the rabbis serve his... Uh, his serve his turn. Yeah. His Yo, needs, yeah. Right? He's, he's fine with it. I'm pretty so sure. My guess is not... Many people on that stage uh, really like Jews. No. I I bet they've all said some pretty nasty things about. But, no. He, here's where here's where it all gets mussy. Because it all gets a little bit mussy. Okay. Okay. Because, like, they love Jews. No, they don't. Until Jesus comes again. They love and then Jews it's like, until there's, like, actually something really Jewish happening. Right. Right. Yeah, until something Jewy actually goes on, until right. until or like until the Jews actually don't say like if Jesus comes back, they'll be like, okay, Jews, you had your time. Uh, here's Jesus. Give us all of Jerusalem now. Right, that belongs to us. Now. Well, and if they ever actually met one of these rabbis, as soon as the rabbi leaves the room, guaranteed they're like, I don't what know, a man. Funny little man. Yeah, I mean, you know what I mean. Like, surely, I don't want to project too much onto them of like how anti-Semitic I think they really probably are, but they love they they just have this fanaticism of like I feel like they love the fetish of they do fetishize Ju yeah like Judaism as a concept. They, yeah, they just love it, and I love that they're like, oh, well, I mean, obviously, anyone who go so far as to declare Donald Trump the Messiah yeah. has done something truly remarkable. <laughs> uh, these guys are... This guy <laughs> is amazing. And uh, surely... Right. At the, at the at the end of Donald Trump's uh, uh, career as president, uh, which I'm going to assume ends with him in jail, but we don't know for sure... <laughs> um, at the end of his uh, his presidency, this guy will, of course, not back off of of his of his declaration that the Messiah has come. There's no there's no way that he would just never mention that again. Well, what is this sort of sort of whistle away? Like, okay, so the the, the Messiah <laughs> arrives and like rules everything, right? Like, isn't the Messiah fixes the whole fixes things? Uh, or or and then there's a war. I don't know. Like, there's just no way that in eight years, hopefully less than four years, these guys are saying, yep, he was the Messiah. We were right. There's just no way that they end up saying that. No matter what happens, there's no way. So I kind of I love it when they say stuff like this because you just want to go back to them in just a few years. It's the same thing as like going to them now and saying, "Was Obama really the Antichrist?" I no, really? I I would love it if they glommed on <clears throat> to Donald Trump for real. Oh yeah, and after he leaves office, he, they're still like, "That was the Messiah." Help us, teacher. That was the Messiah <laughs> that we've been waiting for. <laughs> that was it. <clears throat> yeah, it, it kind of. It wasn't exactly what we thought it was going to be, or what we'd hoped for all this time. <laughs> No, that's who it was. Yeah. And then Donald Trump goes down in history. There's a new book. There, yeah. The, the, He's this... The even newer testament. Yeah. That All, is, you know, it's uh, the, the, the the art of the deal. <laughs> it's like studied for, for the next 2,000 years. Oh, my God. I think so. I think we found it. I think, we, uh, <laughs> I think we've really hit on things. And that ghost writer of the art of the deal is just like, man... Yeah, exactly. God, uh, that was that close. <laughs> Should have gotten a a better deal. Oh, I oh, get it now. Fuck me. Oh, he did it. He did a better deal than I did. All right. Uh, we had some folks write into us, uh, including Barry, who wrote in and said, "Hey, Frank and Dan, wanted to touch on a couple points. Uh, first, uh, in regard to the Star Trek segment, uh, you will recall, Frank, that uh, wait." We talked about an episode we of talked Star about Star Trek, the new Star Trek that came, that's coming out, and an actor said, "Oh my God," and they cut and I don't said, know. "You can't say God." I don't know anything about that. You, you were in the room when it happened. Uh, you made start Star Trek. You've never heard of this? No. I'm, I'm... 
I'm at a loss. Nerd. Anyway, uh, yes. Yeah, so, uh, so yes, they they don't allow the 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 big G word on the set of Star no, Trek because they, so. because it's an atheistic uh, future. Uh, but Barry says, I don't think that it would be odd to hear a phrase like "for God's sake" in a future godless world slash universe. I am long and far removed from Christianity, but I still find myself using phrases containing God. For example, oh my God, thank God, or bless you when someone sneezes. These become a part of our vernacular, and I don't see them going anywhere, even if God does. Second, I have a theory as to why atheists are more likely to believe in extraterrestrial life, ghosts, etc. Uh, you'll recall, Franklin, that we talked about uh, the fact that many people leave a religion mm -hmm. and then suddenly start believing in other things. Exactly. Like yeah. ghosts, etc. Right, right, right. Uh, when I was in the church, says Barry, and interested uh, in a uh, interested about aliens, I was told the Bible never said God created other life, so there was none. The same was true for ghosts, uh, as the Bible explains what happens when you, as the Bible explains what happens when you die. Maybe other Christian sects have a similar outlook. Then, once you leave your religion, the restriction is no longer there, and you're free to believe whatever you like about the universe. I think that that's an interesting point. Yeah. Yeah. Like, you wanted to believe in aliens and ghosts before. Yeah. And uh, you're, you're, you're whatever your Jesus thumper, thumping uh, yeah. Makes sense. guy said, said no. I have no problem with that. I do want to get back to this whole thing about God in the Star Trek universe. Yes. Because, I mean, I think that you, like, would would people 200 years, 300 years, however, I think, I think it's like 300 years in the future, um, in an atheist society not say any, make any reference to gods or whatever, who can say? Who can say? But this is a representation of a godless universe. So right. I think that's why it's important. I think, I, you know, to my mind, uh, when I think about it, I think probably, I because he's right uh, in that. I still say, oh, my sure. God, or whatever. Yeah. Matter of fact, what's funny is I never said, oh, my God, when I was a Mormon because there was a strict prohibition against right. that. Right. Uh, but I say it now. I say, God bless you. I say, I, I say, I specifically say, God bless you, not just bless you, because I find it funny when somebody sneezes. But, you know, I, I say all of these phrases, and they're, they're, they, they are. They're cultural much more than they are actually religious at this point, at least in our culture. Mm-hmm. But I don't think that uh, I don't think they'd last long if God actually was evicted from if if if, if like our society became atheistic. Mm -hmm. I don't think that those I think those phrases would be replaced. Yeah, over time. That's a safe assumption. Anyway, I also have. Do you have something that's immediately connected to that? Because I have another response to sort of words that we've go. Yeah. All right. Do it. Hey, Frank and Dan, listen to your show today uh, where you were talking about use of the word spiritual. And uh, I'm an atheist. My name's Carl. I go by Atheist Engineer on Twitter. And I've decided lately that I'm no longer going to uh, cede those words to the religious community. Um, I'll take them back and use them the way that they always did. So I count a spiritual experience as one where I feel connected uh, to a community. It's a good feeling. It's nothing magical. And uh, and I feel the same way today about um, describing the character of Jesus. I refuse to say that just because somebody's Christian and I'm not, that they get to tell me what Jesus would want or who he is or what his values were, because I knew that character just as well as they do. And um, he's every, much, every bit as much my character as he is their character. So anyway, it's just an interesting perspective. Thanks. Uh, love the show, guys. Bye. Well, thanks, Carl. Yeah. Uh, for calling in. Apparently, you are a spiritual uh, Christian atheist. <laughs> you are you you like Jesus and spirituality. Well, he's he's very specifically uh, calling Jesus a character, right? So you know, sure. Do you believe the Batman is real? Yes. Right. Oh, oh, I do. So you're a Batmanologist. I'm a I'm a Batmologist. Batmologist. Uh, no, I I. I think it's interesting. I still, I still find a def the definition of spirituality to be something like connected to a community. That's I find that spurious, Carl. <laughs> but again, though, this was a little bit of the point that I was trying to make. Of like, we can take these words, right, right, that have a meaning 
that I think we can all kind of still still feel right um and take the part of it that works for us and continue using i mean who the fuck cares yeah absolutely i just i wish we i I don't know the word better words i bet i wish we had new words yeah we don't i i don't know i mean i don't know why we can't coin new words or just go with like you know, if if you feel a connection to your fellow man in a moment, or if you feel a connection to nature in a moment, what's wrong with how I just phrased that? I feel a powerful connection to nature right now, or I feel something, I feel awestruck currently. Right. Why do we need the word spiritual? Why do why does a, a spirit have to come into anything? I think there's a little bit of uh, when communities take back words or take over mm. words, there's power in now controlling that word. And so I think if Carl feels like there's um, an advantage for him using the word spiritual to describe these experiences and connections, then I think he he's 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 in control. He's in the driver's seat of the language that he's using in a All sense. Right. Well, I'm going to take I'm going to take back the word Mormon. <laughs> Why not? I'm Mormon and it doesn't mean what they say it means. Why not? Well, because it doesn't work. <laughs> that's why not <laughs> but if you have enough people on board with a thing then you take it back well maybe i because just don't know that you need it back i don't want the word mormon uh back i don't want the word spiritual i don't need it well, i have my don't. own stuff people some people do yeah i guess so i guess so i don't know i it's a weird thing i have i have mixed feelings i have mixed feelings half of it is like yes uh you know what you were you this was a thing that was important to you for a long part of your life. Make it mean something new for you. Make it make it mean what you need it to mean. Right. The other part of me is like, well, but you know, move on. There's it's new. Yeah, but, You're in a different place. Right. But the word spiritual doesn't have an inherent connection to any one religious practice or whatever, right? And so yeah. it is this word that's kind of just hanging out there. I don't know. Indeed. All right. Elise wrote into us. Elise said, really enjoyed your discussion last week of how those who give up religious beliefs may turn to other irrational beliefs in a pursuit of something more than just being alive in an amazing natural universe and human-made world. Uh, this made me think of the Douglas Adams quote. Quote, isn't it enough to see that a garden is beautiful without having to believe that there are fairies at the bottom of it, too? Oh. I thought that that was a very... Uh, that 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 is a lovely way of summing up where I'm coming from on that mm, on that okay. issue, which is right. just yeah. Look at that gorgeous garden. You, I mean, why why take a position on fairies one way or the other? Why not just realize that you know that there's a garden there for sure, right? And appreciate that. Yeah, absolutely. Okay, I have another voicemail. Okay. Hey, Frank and Dan. This is Garrett from Texas. Uh, you guys were talking about UFOs in the last episode, and Frank kept on saying that he believed that there are, you know, life out there somewhere, and Dan seemed to get kind of, like, hung up on that. And I, I, I understand kind of, like, where he is coming from, but I think a better way, at least how I have kind of accepted my beliefs on this subject, is that I'm kind of, I, I would say that I'm convinced by the, I guess, mathematical fact of that, you know, there's so much, like, expansive universe out there. Um, I wouldn't, I think, like, belief is kind of like a, pro, a the next proactive step. Um, and so I don't really have evidence to support the fact that I would believe that there's life out there. But I am, by, by all the experts, what I've seen from experts, I, I would be convinced that life exists somewhere else out in the universe uh thanks a lot bye thank you very much for the call being convinced versus believing that's an interesting distinction to make yeah is it a meaningful distinction (sighs) it feels i mean if i'm fine with that i don't know i the wording irks me less i will say that i will say i don't know i'm feeling spiritual about it right now (laughs) just take a nice spiritual position on it um, no, I'm, I'm fine with that. I mean, I get that there is reason, uh, the mathematic, like I get the argument, you mm-hmm. know, mathematically, it seems unlikely there that there would, that we would be 
alone in the universe as right. as the sole intelligent beings of the universe right. or as the sole planet containing in intelligence right uh it still doesn't to me there's no evidence that there is another planet right and to me uh, a belief should probably be based on an evidence or on a, on a, on on evidence uh so maybe uh just i don't know I, what i'm not a philosopher i'm not a scientist so I'm not even a lexicographer, so what the fuck am I getting hung up about? I don't know. <laughs> but yeah, I don't know. I, there's something that irks me about the concept of believing something uh, without sufficient evidence. Hmm. There's something that very much irks me about that. Hmm. So maybe being convinced of something is, is enough. Maybe that's enough to just Con have of a different word. Convinced feels more strident, though. Does it? Yeah. No, to me, an established belief feels uh, feels like a done deal. No, belief is more open Ugh. to my mind. Fucking language, man. Yeah. Get your act together, words. <laughs> we don't know what we don't even know what you like, mean. I words. don't feel like I've really committed to anything by by the statement that I made, but it caught you really off guard. It sounded pretty committed to me. Well, because if again, like um, like the the caller just uh garrett uh -huh. just uh said when you when you look at sort of the probability of the whole thing it's like where do you where do you put yourself on on, on the position is there life in the universe yes or no right and so that's the question other intelligent life in the universe yes or no and so i have to say yes you Even don't... though there's no evidence, because the question is not, is there evidence of life in the universe? But, but you don't have question. to say yes. You can just say we don't know. But the question is yes or no. I, I refuse to believe that. There is no question that's yes or no. The question is, is there life in the, in the universe? We don't know. We don't know for, we, because you're correct. There is no evidence. Right. And that's never what I said, is that there's evidence. I for understand it. that. I, I said it, if you pose that simple question... I think that it's a more tenable argument to say yes than no. Okay. Because your side almost has to say no. My side. Right. That there's no evidence. No evidence for something, so you choose not to believe. I, I just, I feel like that's a false uh, narrative. We don't have to choose yes or no in that question. Right. I just think that that's weird. All right. We'll move on. <laughs> uh, Doug wrote into us and said, uh, dear Frank and Dan... Uh, oh, uh, and I'm going to remind our listeners that we, we did a story, you did a story, you brought mm -hmm. to us a story about uh, a bill that's going through, that's to do that's with... That's been proposed, yes. That's, that's to do with um, uh, n making it illegal to participate in a boycott of, uh, of Israel or of Israeli whatever, something or other. Yeah. Dear Frank and Dan, love your program, but you missed it big time on the bill, which was a tweak of the anti-Arab League boycott legislation that had been enforced for years without interfering with free speech rights, per a Washington Post article, which he sent a link to. Um, if anything, the legislation may infringe on a corporation's right to express itself through boycott participation, but to hold that, that position, you would have to be in the Justice Scalia camp of finding individual rights applying to corporations. Also, Dan, I do not know that IPAC money spent on lobbying carries any greater weight than any other advocacy group, such as the Freedom From Religion Foundation, or FLFRF, as you so hilariously, nope, hysterically, that's the word he used, mm. uh, refer to it. Um, the medical trope, the medical, <laughs> I'm going to start that one over again. Okay. The medieval trope that the all-powerful Jews rule from behind the curtain is too per too pervasive to suggest that Israel advocacy has any unique weight without quantitative data to establish the point. I'm guessing you don't have that evidence, so perhaps you should retract your suggestion, along with Frank's hysterical overreaction to tweaking existing foreign involvement legislation. Doug was not the only person to write in mm -hmm. on this uh, point. Uh, there were a couple of other people. So uh, I went back and did a little bit more research on the subject. Not a lot, just a little bit, because believe me, this is some in-depth shit. Mm -hmm. 
and uh, and you and I don't usually we we're not qualified to to wade into these weeds too far, and I hope our listeners understand. We're 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 not. Yeah. Well, like I said, you know, if I'm going to def- defend what happened just slightly, like I said, I I was like, that's a crazy story. That seems really weird to me. Yeah. I'm going to go see if I can find this someplace else. Found another reputable news source in my mind that had the exact same story. So, well, and here's the deal. What what did happen was well, that, the, I, and it wasn't the exact same story. It was covered by a different journalist. Right. right. It wasn't a, a right. just a repeat of it. Right. What happened was the ACLU went nutty over it, mm-hmm. and uh, and that's what was reported. And we were abs- you were absolutely right that uh, to to report that that the ACLU. Uh, said that the proposed act was uh, unconstitutional mm-hmm. and and abridged uh, free speech. Right. Um, I'm still unclear on what all this is. I mean, here's the thing. It, what it seems to be, it is a continuation of laws, as, as, uh, as our writer pointed out, that are already in place, first adopted in 1977. This goes all the way back to then, um, when the Arab League was trying to boycott uh it was a bunch there was like a boycott uh israel altogether right trying to sort of block them out of as much um international business as they could possibly could right and the u.s uh i think now the sense that i get and i've not been able to find enough information to back this up but the sense that i get is that u.s companies were being heavily pressured by like Saudi companies and by these other companies that were very powerful companies Mm -hmm. not to deal with Israel. Okay. And, and they were under like, there was, there were going to be consequences to U S companies from these Saudi companies if they dealt with Israel. Mm. So the U S made a law that said you can't participate in a boycott called by a foreign country. Okay. Uh, in order to indemnify the U.S. companies from being able, from from backlash, so then the the U.S. company can say, "I'm sorry, I can't do it. Right. I can't participate in this boycott. It's against the law." Right. And then and then the Saudi company couldn't couldn't punish them in some way. Right. Or something like that. Uh, and and yes, it's true that uh, c- corporations do not have free speech rights in the way that hum- uh, an individual person has free speech rights. Right. So that's interesting. I don't know all the ins and outs of it. Um, this would just... So this was just an extension. This law that was, that's was that been proposed is just an extension of existing laws that have been upheld multiple times. Uh, and, and the extension is to say that not only can these co- corporations not uh, participate in boycotts called by foreign countries but also they can't participate in boycotts called by the un which is a something that apparently is not happening ah but they just wanted to make it clear it all seems very strange to me uh and i don't and i don't pretend to understand it all the ins and outs of it but it has but these laws have been on the books for you know 40 years and they do have uh they have sort of been put through the ringer in terms of uh in terms of checks and balances and seemed to check out mm-hmm. um you know even if you have one one civil rights uh lawyer pointed out that uh it, there's a difference between having the right to say what you need to say and then having having the right to take whatever action you want to take so they said that you know if a kkk member uh uses con- constitutionally protected speech uh to 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 make racially hateful comments that's one thing but if they publish a for sale notice that says that they will not sell their house to Jews or African Americans they lose their constitutional protection in that environment because you're not allowed to to do that you're not allowed to only sell just to blank or blank right. sort of thing okay that's how that's the that's the comparison that they made. Again, I don't understand all of it. I will say this. I don't think that I ever made uh I, I went back and listened to what I said. I don't think I ever made a con- uh, uh, I know I I made I I did reference um 
I, I mistakenly referenced uh, uh, Jewish lobbying, which is not what I had meant to talk about. What I had meant to talk about was I think that there's a weird pro-Israel thing that happens, especially among evangelical Christians in this country, and, and, and it becomes a very powerful thing to say I'm pro-Israel for, for a, a U.S. politician to talk about being pro-Israel and to show their constituents that they are actively fighting for Israel, whether it makes sense or not. Right. And I think that that's what I was trying to get across, and I really did a piss-poor job of talking about it because that's what really bothers me. I, I got nothing against Israel as a country mm-hmm. um, and certainly not against any more against Jewish people than I do any other religion. I don't like... I don't right. like religion in general, but, uh, but yeah, I do think that like, there's this weird, like Israel has this weird place in American politics that is not occupied by any other foreign country. And I think that that, I think that it's strange and it's, it, it's disproportionately powerful because they're, they stand in opposition to a bunch of Muslims and Americans hate Muslims more than anybody. So <laughs> the friend of my, of my you know, the, the, the enemy of my enemy is my friend. I don't know. There's a whole bunch of ins and outs to it, but that's kind of where I was trying to go. And yeah, I'm sure I stumbled and, and was an idiot about it all. But anyway, uh, that's our, what is that? A retraction? What are we doing? Corrections. A correction. We'll correct ourselves at least partially on that stuff. Uh, so thank you for writing in and calling for that, uh, Doug and others. Uh, do we have any, uh... We have new patrons on Patreon. Woo-hoo! Need to be thanked. We have people to thank. Promptly. Yeah. Uh, we have a new, uh, faithful listener ah. by the name of Brian. Brian. Thank you, Brian. So and faithful you are. we have a new, uh... Beatified. Beatified <laughs> okay. listener. Good. Uh, Who's that? I think, therefore, I gam. Oh, it's a Gamcast listener. Oh. That's sweet of them. Well, I think uh, that you do think, Gamcast <laughs> listener. Um, so thank you very much. Thank and you. of course, continuing as our lords and saviors, co- James and James. Lords and saviors, James and James. Uh, it's. Let me tell you something. It, we adore. It, it feels. It's amazing. That people are, are willing to yeah. uh, to the the people are showing their appreciation yes. in this way, really, really uh, amazing. And, and we just uh, want to say uh, we appreciate you guys so much, yeah. our patrons. Yeah, thank you. And if you'd like to become one of the faithful, venerable, beatified, so forth and so on, uh, you all you need to do is go to thankgodimatheist.com and click on the support tab and sign up on Patreon. And we will and and we will then appreciate you as much as we appreciate these others. In the name of the James and the James. Amen. Amen. Dan. Yes, sir. Do we have to talk about the Mormons again? I have <laughs> ancestors, goddammit. I uh, there are people. In uh, who created people, yeah. who created people, yeah. who created a person who created me. Right. And, and it goes that, back and back and back and back and back. And it goes back all the way to Adam and Eve. Yeah. Although I think that it's always funny when, when people say, you know, talk about Adam and Eve, because like there's this there's that whole Noah bottleneck that happened too. Yeah, it goes through goes through Noah. Once we get to Noah, like we all have the same uh, ancestors going back after before that, kind yeah, of. that's yeah, you'd have to kind of. So there yeah. you go. It's a, it's a little bit of a mix, but it just kind of balloons out and goes right back up. To yeah, yeah. Anywho, yeah, um, lovely. I don't makes, makes I, genealogy a little bit easier. I don't believe in any of that stuff, but what I do believe is that Mormons love genealogy. Oh, no, 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 no. <laughs> they need a new word. Love <laughs> does not. Uh, does not uh, is not strong enough of a word. Well, you said before it's pretty close to worship. Yeah, it's like it's fed. They they complete. It's a complete fetish fetish fetishization of the whole thing of of ancestors of ancestors. Here's how deep this shit goes. Mm. 
in the world, there is probably no more powerful archive of genealogical data than that contained in the uh, within the church records. Yeah, the of the, the the records of the LDS Church to the point where Ancestry dot com, which is not a Mormon owned business, no, but it started here. Uh, they started here because they needed to start here because this is where the data is. Yeah. And they made a deal with the LDS church so that they could have access to their data, which was that then they, they provided access to every Mormon. Mm -hmm. They get a free ancestry.com account. Oh my God. Every single Mormon does. That's worth a, that is they're expensive. They are. I wonder how expensive. They're not cheap. No, they're, they're, they are certainly not cheap. Uh, you can go to downtown Salt Lake City. Yeah. The LDS uh, uh, family history library, whatever yeah, it think, is. Yeah, you nailed it. Yeah. Uh, I was actually told this yesterday. Yesterday, I took some friends uh, through the Temple Square. We went uh -huh. to Temple Square. We visited. We. Uh, I gave them the, my tour of of temple square oh yeah uh and but we went also to a place where you you have to be you have to have a chaperone uh -huh. some some nice old mormon person right guides you uh walks with you and and tells you things makes sure you don't and you this know, guy up the place right this guy was a uh, very sweet a little little man uh who told us who excitedly told us you know if you go to the family history library They'll give you an iPad, and you take your picture, and uh, and they'll tell you where your family's from and who, what famous people you're related to, and blah blah blah. And I was mm. like, like the picture thing actually felt a little creepy to me. Yeah. Like, oh shit, like they're they're saving it. They, yeah, that's that that pops up in somebody else's search or whatever. Mm -hmm. and, but it is interesting. They have done a lot of the work, and for for very very free. They will let you wander on in, <laughs> and they'll tell you a lot about who you are. You know, the they may I don't know if you're from Uzbekistan and you you're from, none of your family's ever made it to the U.S. They may not know much, but they know a lot, right? Uh, well, this is really important in their theology. They they need to connect all the generations together in one continuous chain and why is people that being sealed together so that you can go and be with your loved ones in the afterlife here's the thing nominally that's what they say part of it is everybody's got to be a mormon or everybody's got to have had the opportunity to be a mormon uh and we're not just talking about going forward in time backward we're going backward in time yeah. So all of these people who died, uh, you may or may not have known this. We've talked about this a little bit on the show. Uh, everybody who dies in the whole world, everyone who's ever lived, everyone who will ever live, um, goes to the afterlife. And there, the only way to get to super heaven, because there's like, okay, heaven. And then there's like, pretty fucking cool heaven. Yeah. And then there's super heaven. Right. And in super heaven, there's mega heaven. So, like, really, right. that's what you want. <laughs> right. Is mega it's the heaven. VIP, VIP room. Right. Like, it's just like, it is. It boy. is swank. Yeah. It's uh, so cool. Really, really nice. Uh, and, you, and everybody deserves the opportunity mm -hmm. to get there. Oh, yeah. Uh, and the, but the only way you have a chance of getting there is to accept Mormonism. Is to accept. But wait, Mormonism came around in the 1800s, Dan. There were. Probably hundreds of people born before that. <laughs> well, then this will be easy. <laughs> right. Nope. Uh, they, the Mormons believe that they have to, like the only way, the, there's only one way to get to super heaven and then mega heaven within super heaven. And that's to have been uh, uh, endowed mm. in the temple. Yes. And as you, I have my endowment. Yeah. And then you threw it away. I threw it away. Cause you, Got rid of it. Because you like penis instead of Stumped vagina. Dumped all over it. <laughs> so anyway, uh, they, all these people who never had access to these to the temple, to the mm -hmm. Mormon temple, yeah. just die and what? Go to shitty heaven? No. The Mormons will do temple work for everybody. 
This is their goal. This is their stated thing. Oh, yeah. They are required by their beliefs mm-hmm. to do it for everyone who has ever existed. Ever. Well, Dan, <laughs> what about all the people that there's no, like, birth or death records for? Uh, uh, uh that shut seems up. Like, that seems like uh, <laughs> Most... ev- everywhere before a certain number of thousands of years ago. Right. Uh... And still in certain places today jesus will fix it jesus will fix it someday well that's what the millennium is for. the millennium when ladies the earth, and gentlemen when the earth shall be as an ermine and thummim <laughs> so stupid <laughs> so dumb <laughs> uh yeah so there will be a thousand years of of doing work a uh, whole bunch of poor sacks on earth will their whole job the will just be the whole point of the millennium is just do genealogy work. just to do genealogy just and figure then, out all the people who have ever lived yeah and then do boring 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 temple work for them so that they can choose in the afterlife whether or not they accept it for themselves right after jesus has shown up and taken over things oh my god it's the one in like this never made sense to me no it's the one it's it's this you know, godocracy at this point. Yes. Right. He just rules everything. Right. And you're sitting there in the afterlife and your work just got done for you. And it's like, well, I have to choose whether to accept this or not. <laughs> um, so, so if, so by the, the way, if I get to accept either the state of things as they are or say, no, 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 it, that's not going to work for me. Right. And then be cast out. Basically, the theory is Jesus kind of pokes his head in your face and says, hey, do you accept me uh, as existing? And you say, yes or no. Yeah. That's sort of how it's presented. Anyway, it's well, all a bunch. It's very, very silly. I but, remember thinking, why the fuck was I born Mormon? Right. It's a. This is awful. This is a curse. It is a curse. Like, why couldn't I have been one of the people like a couple thousand years ago or a couple hundred years ago? Yeah. And then like the work, I could have just done whatever the fuck I wanted. Yeah. The work was done for me and now I'm okay. But now I'm some stupid Mormon kid. Right. Genghis Khan could have killed ever and raped everybody in the world. Yeah. But he wasn't offered Mormonism as an option. Right. So now he in is in heaven uh, or, or in, in sort of the waiting room, heaven's right. waiting room. And somebody has done his temple work for him, and now all he has to do is look around, read the writing on the wall, and go, yeah. oh, yeah, I accept that. How would that go, Dan? I baptize you, Dan Beecher, in for, for, for an in the name, name of, of Genghis Khan. <laughs> it's already <laughs> had. It's already happened, my friend. No. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They no. got all the big famous ones. Uh, Let me tell you something. Before for, so, and in behalf of so now, Adolf Hitler. Yeah. I know. It's happened. I know. Uh, because Ugh. they did, be, because there was, now there's a very strict edict that you, you basically, you only get baptized for your own ancestors. Right. That wasn't always in place. So right. like all the famous people, oh yeah, somebody's been baptized for them. All the founding fathers, their work have been done. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. That's, that's done. But everybody. Everybody. Um, it stopped kind of when... Jews were like, uh, you need to not do this for Holocaust survivors or Holocaust uh, victims. Right. You need to not, you need to really just stop. Right. Which is funny because. But there was, they found this great, the Germans were good at records. Yeah. And so, like, that's. They had Mormons, names. Mormons love records, right? Because then they can go <laughs> desecrate your dead. Right. Well, desecrate. <laughs> Let me tell you something. If you're, if any Jews are listening, it doesn't really do anything. Right. You can let them do it. It won't hurt anything. It just yeah. feels weird. That's yeah. all. Anyway, uh, so so now, so these Mormon people are obsessed with their ancestors. Yeah. And let me tell you, and, and as you and I were talking about, you'll hear a little bit about Jesus uh, in Mormon church. Mm-hmm. His name gets dropped a lot. But guess who you'll hear more about? The Mormon pioneers. Oh, yeah. These oh, yeah. these brave souls. And let me tell you something. If somebody is from one of these families, Cannon, yeah. Smith, yeah. Young, yeah. if they're from one of those, Pratt, boy, you're from one of those families, you do not shut up. 
Well, people also won't stop asking you either. Right. Right. Like, you have no choice. Well, you, you are sort of, um, you know, Mormon history royalty. Yeah. Yeah. Doesn't matter. It's that's that's your lot in life, Dan. Yeah, you. It's it reminds me of of. Do uh, you remember in um, oh, uh, uh, waiting for Guffman when there's there's one lady who talks about being a direct descendant of of the guy who founded their town, Blaine, right, whatever right. his name is. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and she's like, you know, it's a responsibility to be <laughs> a direct descendant of Blaine Fabin. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, I certainly know what the Kennedys feel like. <laughs> <laughs> well, we got that here too. Yeah. Well, but I, I, we've talked about this a bit. I don't know that we've really like, have we made our case of ancestor worship? No, go on. Why don't you, why don't you, uh, press that a little bit? Oh, I don't have a case. <laughs> we just start. <laughs> <laughs> No, <laughs> you better back that shit up. Oh man. my god! No, um, I think where my mind sort of was, um, it was the resources that are thrown at this, and it was exactly what you were just talking about, which is the, you know, this one. It, what made me really start thinking about this was the the Days of Forty Seven celebration, right? Which is a which which is uh, the, a statewide celebration here in here in Utah. Of the arrival of the first Mormon pioneers. In, in 1847, yeah. Exactly. And, and it, it made me start thinking about how much, as a, as a, as a non-Uton, as a kid with absolutely no connection to any of these pioneers, right? How much I was told all of their stories over and over and over and over again mm. as a child, mm. right? And that that seemed really strange. Like at the mo at the time, it didn't seem all that strange. Uh, that's just the church I grew up in. But instead of reading the Bible or even the Book of Mormon, for that matter, right, and just studying like the and, and learning about Jesus, right, sure, uh, we spent all of this time in church telling the stories of the pioneers over and over and over. And I was like, you know, is this is more of a pioneer cult or an, an and I'm like, Oh wait, no, 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 no. It's like an ancestor cult. Yeah. It's, it's this, it's this religion or this church rather that's, that's obsessed with this one time in their history. And they, they completely fetishize. I've used that word so many times now in this episode. I'm just obsessed with the word fetish. I'm, you have, I have a fetish for the word fetish. Right. Um, but they, they, they keep, they, yeah, they, they've, they've taken this history and they just obsess and obsess and obsess and obsess about it. Unlike most other, you know, groups, right. Histories, right. Like we have our sort of foundational stories of the United States, right? Like we have all and the And if you're descended stories. from someone who came to the U S on the Mayflower, yeah. chances are, you know, yes, because that's been passed down. Yes. Uh, through your family lore. Yes. Or if you're descended, you know, if you're a descendant of Thomas Jefferson. Sure. Chances right. are you're aware of this fact. Right. And so it, that exists in sort of, you know, that whole world. But I don't know of many other, like, you know, you know, the Baptists aren't going nuts over, you know, what was his name? John Calvin or whatever. <laughs> right. <laughs> like, they, like, like they, they don't obsess about their founding in right. the same way. Right. Like at all. They're focused on the theology. What what was distinct about the 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 founding principles of this sect and how are we different because of that? But it's all theology, theology, theology. And Mormons aren't there. No. Mormons are in this obsessive state about their their history. Well, so much of what makes a Mormon a Mormon is it's it's funny because Mormonism's in this weird spot mm -hmm. where they're both trying to become like prove they're trying to prove at the same time that they are part of mainstream christianity don't worry about us we're just christians right just like you we got a, a few different things we're basically just christians right at the same time they love all the things that make them different right 
And they love, like, like, this is why they glom on to, you know, the we don't drink alcohol and we don't drink coffee thing. Yeah. Because it's different, and they like to feel different. They like to feel their own difference. Yeah. So one of the things that makes them most different is this this history that they have of, you know, persecution in right. the eastern United States and then making the long trek to the western United States and stuff. Right. It's a very... I mean, it's nice that they know their history. Mm. I guess. Yeah. Right? But it seems more nice if you're a descendant of it. Yeah. Uh, and since the church is really run by descendants of those people, <laughs> the church continues to obsess about this, these, th all this lore that surrounds. Which is so funny people. because, yeah, they love to baptize new people into their church. But like, then there's like this whole thing of like, yeah, but you're not one of, one of the original ones. You're not descended yeah. from somebody cool like I am. Yeah. <laughs> My great great grandmother was one of 20 wives of so and so. <laughs> yeah. Do and that's have, the other thing. Do you is, have any of that stuff? Oh, I mean, like, there's some polygamy in my in in my fairly recent right uh, family, but like nobody important. You don't have any of the names. No, mm. none, none of the. Uh... But that's good enough for a lot of people. Yeah, <laughs> like, yeah, exactly. but, but Dan, you could move like if you were an active Mormon and with mm. just those those really nominal connections, right? right? Yeah, they really were pioneers, but they weren't anybody famous, right? You could, if you moved to uh, anywhere in the Midwest, I went to a little ward in the Midwest, you could really parlay that into something. I could make some hay out of it. And yeah. if I've done my research, and this is what the Mormons love to do, mm -hmm. if I knew which hand cart wagon train oh, yeah. they came across the plains in, yeah. then I can say who they came across with. They were part oh, of this yeah. party. Yeah. They, were, did, they did this and that, and they helped settle this part of Utah. Right. And like that's how I glom onto it. Right. You know what? You know, that's my in right. to, uh, to, to like Mormon celebrity. Right. Well, I'm Pioneer Stock. I am from you know? Pioneer Stock. Absolutely. Yeah. I, I mean, pff, who are you from? You're from nobody. <laughs> bunch of Germans or whatever. Yeah, a bunch of Germans in Oakland, California. Yeah. Pfft, nothing. My people yeah. came across the plains at the behest of God. I Yeah, I uh, descend from brewers and butchers. Yeah, that's better. Quite literally. I kind of want... And a, and a, and a, a man who is absolutely obsessed with duck hunting. Apparently. <laughs> oh, my God. I've never... I've, there's like portraits of him like portrait photography right, uh -huh. of him uh where he doesn't have a gun but the rest of it here's this big old german guy with a big old gun and ducks somewhere there's always a duck there's always dead ducks dead ducks <laughs> well there you go i it's i guess you know the the truth is that every everybody everybody's got to get a gimmick you know, yeah, and uh, and the Mormons have a unique one, have several unique ones. You know, we didn't even get into the theology of like eternal families and all of that sort of thing. That's we should have spent some time there. Which is funny because like they have this whole thing about like yes, I mean that's the other element of this that's so important is that we need to know who our family was because they're all who'll be greeting us in the forever after, <laughs> in in the final. I want to go make some new friends, people. Like, why I do I know. want to be stuck to, like, all y'all? I want... Yeah. Like, like, you don't choose who your family is. Yeah. You, you could be descended from an infinite line of pricks. And then it's just like, yeah. you get to be with them for forever? Hell no! I know. Ugh. That's, That's awful. It's just a nightmare. It's it, The whole concept is a nightmare. I know. But think of the stories. That we that will be told. I don't. How do you know that? Yeah. How do you know that you would like your ancestors? They could be really. But you could be. But, I guarantee you, somewhere in the mix, someone murdered someone. Oh yeah. Some one one of your ancestors was a murderer. Not killed somebody like they went off to war or something, but like was a fucking douchebag. Beat his wife and murdered somebody. And murdered somebody. Yeah. That happened. Guaranteed that happened. But. Multiple, multiple, multiple times. So that's yeah, the these that's, are the people you're hanging out with. You're really focusing on negative stuff, Frank. 
The positive is you can be with that person forever. <laughs> Hooray! <laughs> oh, Lordy Jesus. All right, kids. Well, I mean, I don't know. Did your religion have... What's special about the religion that fucked you up, ladies and gentlemen? Write to us. Tell us what belief you guys had that that was uh, uh, something... Atrocious. Something that, that they glommed on to. Uh, you can write to us at podcast at thankgodimatheist.com. Or you can call, leave us a voicemail message. The telephone number is 424-666-8442. Yeah, go to the Facebook page, facebook.com slash Atheist, and click that like button. And while on Facebook, search for the TGIA Members Only Lounge and request to join. It's a closed group, but we'll let you in. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, speaking of Facebook, thanks so much to Mackenzie for uh, for for taking care of our Facebook page. Mm -hmm. And thanks to uh, Danny, Sarah, and Amy for their fine work as mods on the in the Members Only Lounge. And thanks, of course... Uh, goes out to the Red Rock Hot Club and Gordon Johnston for the use of their music. Yes, and thanks again to all of our patrons on Patreon.com. Uh, we sure do uh, appreciate all of your fine, uh, your, your kind and generous patronage. And thank you, dear listener, for tuning in. Bye! Bye!